Now let us look into some points that are time wasters and we don't really realize that they're time wasters. Number one, telephone interruptions. <coughs> telephone interruptions um, could be for some people a feeling of joy and for some it could be a feeling of irritation and disturbance. It depends on you know what is my state of mind. Like for example for students uh, interruptions could be by friends. They're getting bored and they don't know what to do and so they will call a friend and ask him would he like to go out and for a movie or just for strolling around. But we understand that telephones are made for my convenience and not for others' convenience. For professionals also it could be the same um, and it could be plenty. Like we see um, life insurance, holiday packages, and you oh know these um, telemarketing people who keep Thank calling, you for and Your call is it being could be really disturbing. Agent. And uh, so we understand that it is not important to answer all of these calls. And maybe if I could have um, a list in my mobile, which are of people who really matter and are important to me, with the names on it, and um, in this way, you know, one one way that I can uh, see that how I can you know talk to people who are important and then eliminate the ones which are not so important. So we understand that telephone interruptions could also be a time waster. In today's time mobile has come in and mobile now feels you know seems like a necessity and so what happens? You know, uh, the mobile keeps ringing, SMS keeps happening. Now we have Facebook, we have WhatsApp on the mobile, we have internet technology that is seeped in. Tablets have come in of all sizes, six inch tablets, 10 inch tablets. And just look at the way communication has progressed. We need to see that whether that communication is helping me in my, in my present time. Present time in terms of what I have decided to give it to. Now that is very important and so these little distractions bring down the quality of the moment. You know the work, the assignment, the activity that I have decided to undertake and these little little bit of interruptions they come as, as a disturbance to bring down the quality of the work that I could do. Another thing which is about drop-in visitors. We don't realize whether at home or at work if there are people who come just barging inside your home, you know, they ring the bell and say, surprise, we have come here, or they just come and, uh, you know, they ring the bell and you were busy in some work and now you need to sit and entertain and talk to them, what would it feel like? It's difficult. It's difficult. So it's always better to be wise um, in terms of being polite, in terms of chalking out a way. If somebody comes in like this, I if I would sit down and entertain them then what would happen? They would feel that I'm free and they could come again like that. So it, it's important that I kind of make them realize that I've been busy but it's okay that you have come. I would give you little time but at the same time I'll, I'll, be keep, I'll keep doing my work. And so what will happen? Next time they'll be cautious. Um, they might even call you before coming. They might tell you if it's okay, if at, if at this time I can come. Uh, now th this was about home but at work also things could be similar. We have friends, we have relatives who just walk in and at work what we are doing, we are trying to find a living through which we can you know live a livelihood and that is a very important time and at that, that time when we have people just walk in um, and you know we being in the middle of some work um, you know, you understand, you know what I'm trying to say. It just gets, you know, the, the mood and the, and the thing that you are into it, it just gets diluted. So it's important that I address this uh, issue of the drop-in visitors. The third is ineffective delegation. Whether it is students or professionals, my inability to get work done through people and my inability to understand, to recognize which work should be allotted to whom. And so what happens? 
ineffective delegation. Uh, the work might get done, but then maybe the time would lend them. Maybe the quality of work deteriorates because the work which should ideally be given uh, to a person who is expert in that, in that work is not given because maybe of my lack of understanding, my lack of discrimination and judgment. And so effective delegation is important. It helps me to use my time effectively. Uh, many times because of haste, we tend to give work to incompetent people. And so maybe I can wait a little while and give it to somebody who is competent to complete the work. Another point is meetings. Now, in meetings, uh, you know, the important ones and the not important ones. There would be so many. Uh, in our personal lives, we get invitation cards for many functions. It could be weddings, it could be anniversaries, it could be birthdays, it could be some spiritual gathering, it could be a gathering of the society. Mm -hmm. And so we need to discriminate that which ones are important and which ones are not. Do you think it is possible to attend every event? People would always call us. And why would they call us? So that, so that they could have a big gathering, the name and fame grows. But it is important for me to realize which one's important and which not. Similarly, in our office, we see that, um, especially, that especially in multinational corporations, uh, you know, we have these department meetings, interdepartmental meetings. We have uh, many notices put up, emails being circulated uh, in terms of gatherings in the office or maybe outside. And I need to discriminate uh, these meetings, uh, you know, which project meeting could benefit my department or my scope of work. Um, people would always like to call one another, but my ability to understand that which meeting would help me in my, in my professional work would help me to, you know, use my time more effectively. Now, another point is lack of objectives and priorities. We, uh, we, you know, we are people who are working and at times what happens is we, we kind of become quite loose. Loose in terms of not knowing where we are heading to. So if we have a vision, if we have a plan that where we are heading to, we have our objectives clear and set, it becomes very easy to do work on a time, to use every second that is given to us by God, you know, every day. And it also helps us to also schedule meetings and appointments uh, very easily. I would not have to spend too much of time. Once I have a plan, I have a timetable set for myself. And if somebody comes to me and they say that, um, you know, I would like to talk to you and discuss this important uh, point with you, when can I come? I would not have to think and I would not have to ask them or, you know, okay, I'll tell you later on, let me just see. You know, it would, it would come quite quickly to you because you know, you know, you know your timetable, you know your schedule. And so you could tell them, okay, on Saturday around five o'clock, I'm free and we can, you know, talk this point out. Similarly for students, if um, you know they have a timetable, timetable in terms of their college or their academics, and then after that when they come home and, and they have planned uh, you know, their uh, evening activities or their night activities, you know, it's about giving a piece of your time to each work that is important to you. And that would happen only when I have my objectives and my priorities set and clear the ones which are important, which I need to do right away, and the ones which could be done later. In this way, I would also be able to help others and help my own self. <laughs>